Hi class, it's Ng. I wanted to make you a short video to walk you through your lab write-up. In this video, I'm really, I will go through basically the whole lab write-up, but I really want to focus in on your introduction, your analysis, and your conclusion. And in all three of those sections, you need to hone in on the three big focuses of your lab. And I have them listed here. Number one, you really need to talk about your model of friction. Uh, check out this diagram that I found on the internet. This is our current model of friction. That friction is about these um, really small, these microscopic imperfections on a surface, and they provide shear forces. So friction is a contact force that opposes the direction of motion, right? So you got to really hone in on number one, that model of friction. Number two, hone in on your research question, meaning your question about oh, what material has more friction? Uh, a, B, or C, and then your hypothesis. And then lastly, how is um, this lab relevant to society, to technology, or um, you could just talk about your idea lab project, like this friction will inform my idea lab project because this part should have this much friction, so I would use this material. This part should be very friction free, so I would use this material. Let's start with your introduction. As you can see, um, this is basically the outline that we gave you in your um, card in Altitude called Lab 2. It's got the little fish in it. So the introduction, uh, I, uh, we posted three questions. What is friction? Use citations. That's important. There is a competency on citations. So when you talk about friction, you need to cite something. Go on the internet, give us a website, and do that citation that uh, Chanel or Marianne has taught you to do. All right, and then what is the focus of this lab and how might this lab uh, connect to your idea lab project or how is it relevant? So I envision your introduction being around two paragraphs. The first paragraph is all background information. Describe friction. Describe those main points of friction. Friction is a contact force. Friction opposes the direction of motion. Friction comes from small imperfections on the surface of materials. And that fact, that's, that's our model, right? It's all about those small imperfections. Thinking about those small imperfections, you could predict, oh, you know, a glass is really smooth, so it should have low friction. Sandpaper has many imperfections, should have high friction. So paragraph one, background information. Paragraph two, you should introduce your research question, what has more friction, and then why is that important to your idea lab project? Because my idea lab project is about um, a, a, a tentacle that grabs things. So if it's going to grab things, the, the, the suction cup should have high friction and then the rest of the motion should have low friction, something like that. Two paragraphs in your introduction. After your introduction, you do need to give me a research question. There's a whole nother video about that. Your hypothesis is your guess. And I like the hypothesis to be based on your model. So you should say something like, based on the model of friction, being about um, microscopic imperfections, I think this material will have the highest friction because it has the most microscopic imperfections, right? Or based on the model of friction with these microscopic imperfections, glass should have the lowest friction because it's so smooth. A hypothesis like that. And then the independent variable you should know, those are the three materials that uh, we have to test, right? Whatever you chose, wood, tape, glass, whatever. Your dependent variable will be the height at which it starts to move or the angle at which it starts to move, right? however way you want to think about it. And then I think we're all very good at all the constants. Uh, what are all of the things we keep the same in every trial to keep the lab fair? It's unfair if we change out your surface, right? It's unfair if we make the surface different sizes for, for each trial. So what are we going to keep constant each time? When we get down to the trials and the experimental design, these are pretty self-explanatory, or, or you should know them by now. Um, you should always do three trials per uh, material. You should list your materials. It's, it's not a long list. And then there's already a video that lists through all, your, all of your procedures. So up to now, I hope uh, you've had an easy time writing. When you get down to the data analysis part of your template, um, it might get a little bit confusing because there are two classes that are using these templates and um, we are not going to do tables that look like this. So step one, grab this table and delete it. 
All right, get get rid of this table because it's not it's not it's not the table that we would use to graph. And then instead, go into your Excel sheet or your um, Google sheet, and then grab your data. Right. So here, this is the data that we collected. So I'm gonna do Control Copy. I'm gonna put this right here into my data. That's great. Probably a good idea to also have the length of my cardboard. Right. That's also good data. Copy. All right. I'll put that down here. Good, right? And then for the analysis, this is actually your chart and an explanation and maybe some calculations. So here, uh, I made a mistake and I put these blue questions in the wrong section. So here, copy these questions or cut them out, X, and they actually belong in the conclusion. So my apologies, they did not belong there. Instead, the analysis should have your graph and an explanation. So here, uh, let's go to, um, your sheet. By the end of it, you should have a bar graph that describes all of your data. So I'm going to copy this, copy chart, and then I'm going to move it down to analysis. Good. There you go. That looks pretty good. My professor always told me that there should be no naked graphs, meaning in a lab write-up, when you put in a graph, you have to describe it, even a little bit. You would describe it a lot more in your conclusion, but every graph needs to describe what you are seeing. When we do the analysis, this is another opportunity to go back to our focus. Remember our focus, those three things that I talked about in the beginning? We need to mention the model of friction. We need to talk about, go back to your research question, and maybe hint as to why this is relevant. So here we have a bar chart. And now you have to think about this bar chart in the context of our model of friction. Our model of friction is all about those small imperfections. And then surprisingly, metal has um, the highest friction. So maybe the person who was testing was not testing a smooth piece of metal, but a really rough piece of metal, like, a, like some raw iron or, uh, or a file. So maybe that piece of metal had a lot of imperfections on it, which is why it had uh, this high friction. So here, relate it back to the model. And then go back to your research question. What material has the highest friction? In my case, it's this old rusty piece of metal or friction, frictionful metal, all right? Or um, what has the lowest friction? In uh, this person's case, this piece of cardboard had the lowest amount of friction. And then how is this relevant? Uh, you would do a very short little bit like, okay, so this suggests that um, that when I have something that needs to move quickly, I should uh, line it with cardboard. If I have something that I really want to be stuck and have a nice tight joint, I might use this metal, right? Does that make sense? And all of that should fit in barely a few sentences down here. Don't go too deep into the um, explanation and the analysis. The analysis is an opportunity for you to just kind of describe what you're seeing. I see that metal has the highest friction and cardboard has the lowest friction and then a small hint at that focus go back to the focus and then you're done with analysis it should not be a lot of writing it should be barely like three or four sentences while your analysis does go through the focus of your model your research question and the relevance of it it does so very briefly like just kind of redescribing the data like that that's the main focus of your analysis really when the place where you're really going to flesh out those the, those thoughts is in your conclusion so again uh, all of these blue uh sentences that kind of is an outline for your conclusion i mistakenly put them in analysis so my apologies move those suckers down please so in your conclusion i gave you an outline to again hone in on those three things that you should focus on multiple times in a lab your model your background information your research question, and then the relevance of this lab. So here, I gave you an outline. Step one, evaluate your data. How well does it support your model or hypothesis? You see, it goes back to the model. So here, you'll go back here and look at the data. It says, you know what? Um, surprisingly, the metal is actually one of the smoother things or whatever, and so it doesn't really fit my model. Be honest with it, right? It really depends on what your data is. We describe that background information. So again, you'll talk about the model of friction being about microscopic imperfections, moving against the direction of motion, and then go back to that data. And then finally, 
evaluate. This is the most important sentence that I'm going to be looking for. To what extent does the data support your hypothesis or model? And be very careful. I'm not like, okay, more, I have, I've taught for a long time and many times the kid will have data that looks like this. And then in the conclusion, um, the kid will say, oh, cardboard has the most friction because it has the most imperfections. My hypothesis is correct. But that's not what the data says. So when you evaluate your data, be honest with your data. And it's completely fine to say, you know what? My data does not fit my model. My data does not hit, fit my hypothesis. And then tell me why you don't think it worked. Like, tell me what might have happened for it to have weird data. Does that make sense? It's okay to have weird data, right? You, you just be honest with your data, but talk about what might have happened, what other labs might you do, okay? So there, that's paragraph one. If you had to have a sentence count from paragraph one, I would say like five, six sentences, you know, a standard size paragraph, go through my outline. And then for paragraph two, this is when you hone in on the relevance of your lab. Why are we doing this lab in the first place? To inform your um, idea lab project. So review your idea lab project. Talk about the parts of it that might need high friction and low friction. And then uh, talk about how your um, data will support your idea lab project. And then finally, what other information might you seek, right? Aside from knowing friction, or maybe you just need to do more testing. Right? What other labs might you do? Just so that you can move beyond. So what other things might inform your idea lab project aside from just a discussion of friction? Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you uh, got some good tips to write well for your lab write-up. Again, it's all about having a good focus. Focus on the model of friction. Focus on your uh, research question and your hypothesis. Focus on the relevance of this lab to your idea lab project and do it in multiple places, in the introduction, in the analysis, and in the conclusion. Thank you very much for watching.